Hello students, how are you? I hope you all are fine and doing well at your home. Yes. Today we will learn about chapter number 2, Nutrition in Animal. So what do you mean by animal nutrition? The animals take food in their body and utilize it. That is called animal nutrition. So basically there are 5 steps are involved in animal nutrition. The first one is ingestion, second digestion, third absorption, fourth one assimilation and fifth is a ejection. So first we will see ingestion. So what do you mean by ingestion? The process of taking food in a body that is known as ingestion. Now second, what do you mean by digestion? So we will take a food in a, our mouth, then we will chew it and we will broken down that large particle into small and water soluble particle that is called digestion and after digestion it will go in our small intestine and then it will be absorbed in a bloodstream via small intestines wall that is called absorption then after absorption that food will taken by the cell for the growth repair of damaged body parts and to make energy that is called assimilation and the fifth one is ejection so undigested food or which is not absorbed by the our body it will be taken out by our body and that process is known as ejection so these were the five topics of animal nutrition now there are so many animals are available on the earth and the, all the animals are taking their food by some different methods for example mosquito mosquito sucks blood from other animals including human beings butterfly it will suck nectar from the flower for example uh, you can see the frog and chameleon they will eat flying insect and they will take food in their body the same way some uh, animals having their different kind of method of taking food in their body now we will see what is elementary canal a long running tube which starts from mouth to anus in a human being that is called elementary canal and in this elementary canal the process of digestion and absorption will take place and this tube which is approximate 8 to 9 meter long and this tube contains mouth esophagus this it is also known as food pipe then stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and anus there is also involved three glands first is salivary gland second pancreas third is liver so this is known as elementary canal now the important question is arise how this food move forward in elementary canal the answer is by the peristalsis process now what is peristalsis process in this the wave like movement is created in the elementary canal muscle in that muscle the elementary muscles will be contract and relax contract and relax and by this the food can get a push in the forward direction and this way the food is passed to the earth other body parts of this elementary canal now we will see human digestive system and this is the human digestive system so in human digestive system the first is to will starts from mouth in mouth we will take food into it and then we will chew it in mouth there are three things are present first is teeth second is tongue third one is a salivary gland and when we take food into mouth then we will start chewing so this teeth will cut and grind that food and the salivary gland secret the saliva in that food and the tongue will mix it after swallowing this food will move to the esophagus and the esophagus it will the pipe which connect mouth and stomach and this is also known as food pipe so how the food will move 
from mouth to the stomach in this esophagus yes that is the peristalsis movement by the peristalsis movement the food slowly move down to the stomach understand sometimes we feel unmiserable in our body and we will vomiting so at that time the process see it is the reverse process is happening the food is go from stomach to mouth so this is the anti peristalsis movement understand how the food is go from mouth to the stomach and how sometime or in a case of vomiting the food is coming out from stomach to mouth understand now this food come to the stomach and stomach it is a widest part of alimentary canal and in that the food it will stay for at least 3 hours and in 3 hours that food will convert into semi solid paste the inner lining of stomach will secretes mucus hydrochloric acid and digestive juice the mucus it will protect the stomach wall from hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid will kills the bacteria which is present and come with that food the digestive juice convert protein present into food into simpler substance and then this food move to the next part it is small intestine small intestine the small intestine is a very long tube it's about 7.5 meter long and it is quite narrow and this small intestine we can see here it is arranged in the coil type structure in our belly and uh, this is the site of complete digestion of food is occur and after digestion and the absorption is done in this area this process happens as follow the first the food which is comes from stomach to small intestine which is partially digested now the liver will secrete their juice which is called bile juice and the bile juice temporarily store in this sac which is known as gall bladder and which is very important for digestion of fats actually bile converts fats into tiny droplet so the further breakdowns become easy the pancreatic juice bring down fats completely into fatty acid and glycerol it also helps to break down starch carbohydrates and protein the walls of small intestine secretes intestinal juice which breaks down starch carbohydrates into sugar and proteins into amino acid and in this way the food will completely break down into very small and water soluble substance like glucose glycerol fatty acid amino acid and this is our digested food now it is ready for the absorption and it is also done in the small intestine absorption of this digested food in the small intestine now this digested food is small enough which can pass from small intestine wall to the blood vessel and this is called absorption of food now this small intestine having a millions of tiny finger like outwards like this and which increase the surface area of small intestine and because of that it can rapidly absorb that food material into the blood vessel understand the blood carries absorb food to the cell to the pa all parts of body and in the cell this food use for energy growth and repair and this is known as assimilation understand now the remaining and undigested unabsorbed food which move towards the large intestine now large intestine the large intestine is 1.5 meter long and do you know why it is known as large intestine because it is quite wide tube that's why it is known as large intestine understand yes the function of large intestine 
to absorb water from undigested and unabsorbed food and because of that these undigested foods become semi solid clear and this semi solid food moves toward the large intestine and it is reached to the last part of the alimentary canal which is called rectum and it will stay for the some time and when we go to the toilet and this semi solid semi solid food will pass away from our body in the form of feces and this is called ejection now understand this whole the five topics involved these five points are involved in our digestive system and how our digestion system work understand very good